Wow, when you get a handwritten thing like this, um, that's awesome. I was so freaking excited. I'm Megan McCarthy, author and illustrator of 16 books, working on my 17th. I don't actually normally count, except kids ask that question all the time. How many books have you read? So there you go. This is the one that's currently out now. I thought it'd be a firefighter. Today, I thought I'd tell you about my journey to becoming published. So I had gone to art school. Rhode Island School of Design and I majored in illustration. For the beginning part of, I think, freshman, sophomore year, I was doing a lot of realism. So photorealism, other sorts of realism. Here we have a painting of a creature with big, sharp, scary teeth and shiny eyes. Here is a pile of green frogs. painting of some animals staring at a blue ball. I believe the assignment for this class was blue. That is it. And here is a photorealism painting I did. The thing is though, it takes a long time to paint that. I had five classes a week. They were each studio classes, so they were many hours long. So, you know, not your normal lecture hall where you go for an hour and a half. This was all day, all day affair. So I would always be painting late into the night and I would half finish them or mostly finish them. That was my pitfall, shall I say. Anyways, I took a children's book class at RISD. It was a writing and illustrating. So it was taught by both a, an art rep, so that's a person who represents illustrators and gets them work and an editor. So you guys all know what an editor does at a publishing from a big publishing company. So that's how I sort of got into it. I'm like, this is really cool. I always liked picture books as a kid. In fact, I had a contest competition with my neighbor once who could get published first. It's probably about 10 at the time. I really liked Chris Van Allsburg's art and I was like, I can paint just like that. I was obviously a very cocky child as far as thinking about my artwork. Oh look, my cat's whining. Anyways, so jump forward. I took this class and that's how I sort of got into it. I, what did they give me? They gave me like a B plus, I think, because I didn't participate in crits. That's a whole nother topic. I was bullied in school when I was younger, and so I even into college it really affected me, but blah blah blah. Um, so I remember senior year, oh well first of all, I started doing these cartoons. So I went from realism to cartoons, because uh, one teacher said, well why don't you do, do romance novel covers? And I was like, oh, and I was like, oh. I imagine myself getting like a Fabio painting him in the studio. I'm like, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't do it. I don't, I don't read romance novels. Why would I want to do that? Not that there's anything wrong with that people. I'm just saying I, that wasn't my thing, but I really like these edgy cartoons. So I started doing that. Here's a painting for a, an assignment I did. It's entitled Headache. Here we have a painting called Graduation. and a lovely painting of a hamburger. And this had something to do with stem cell research or something. And um, no words for this one, people, no words. I really wanted to do editorial work, but it wasn't until that children's book class where I was like, oh, maybe I should try a more kid angle. Um, I'll show you some 
art. It was a joke. This is a joke, but I took a propaganda class at RISD and, you know, we would have to pick a topic and persuade people. So I painted these cartoons of these kids smoking. It just said smoke. Um, it's like a propaganda piece. Uh, that is not what I thought children's books would be. I know you don't put smoking in a children's book. In fact, I think that for Goodnight Moon, the, the original in the back photo, the illustrator has had a cigarette in his hand and they've since photoshopped that cigarette out. So that's a no-no. Anyways, but um, yeah, I like I liked having a sense of humor about things and so on. So, um, so after, it was a senior, like it was like the last day of class and one of the teachers said, class, go around the room and everyone say what you know what you're doing afterwards and, and everyone had like a plan an idea i had no idea how could i it was like i was like how old was i 21 yeah i was a little bit of late bloomers 21 i didn't i didn't know i didn't have any connections i wasn't one of those kiss ups to teachers i don't want to like kiss their you know what um so i wasn't going to get any connections that way uh, so everyone's like, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, I'm going to New York, and and, and they're like, Megan, and it was my turn, and I was like, I couldn't come up with anything, and just to be a ball buster, I said, I'm going to deliver pizzas, and the teacher's like, oh, you can't deliver pizzas, but I did, so I didn't even have the job yet, I didn't apply, but I saw a sign in the window down the street at this place, Checkers Pizza, and I was like, I will deliver pizzas. I had graduated from college the year before with a BFA in illustration. Uh, apparently, my degree was useless. Guidance counselor. Why don't you go back to school and major in graphic design? But that's expensive. Are there any illustration jobs? Mm, no, those don't exist anymore. That's why, partly out of defiance, I got a job delivering pizzas. This is going to be awesome! It was a big finger to the world. Unfortunately, oh, sh I'm lost. I sucked at the whole thing. The end. So I got that job. I actually got fired in the first week and rehired, but that's a separate situation. Uh, long story. I got lost for like an hour. This is before cell phones and I was too nervous to come back and admit that I couldn't find the address. So I just wandered around in a panic, running around with like this bag of pizza and the pizza was getting cold. So uh, that is, I am on a tangent, aren't I? I'm just all over the place. Anyways, so uh, while doing that, you, you were supposed to make postcards and send them out. So I have made these postcards to publishers. Ready? Oh. Okay, I had to stop the camera. The cat wouldn't stop howling about getting her food. So anyways, where was I? Oh, so I was working at the pizza place and in between delivering pizzas, the job was more involved. I had to also wash dishes, wash the floor, grate all these big chunks of cheese. Okay, totally other ch tangent. I, there's a big, there's a really good story about the pizza place, but I'm gonna, anyways. So I was making these postcards and sending them out. I was really doing it to magazines like the New Yorker. I was like, that's the, that's the biggest accomplishment. You can have your stuff published in the New Yorker. Um, but so I had sent my children's book story to some editors too. Like about, I read, I got one of those books on, you know, the address of publishers and who to send it to. And I, so I sent it out to about six. I actually, I still have the letters. Most of them are, um, like, say, let me find one. Like this one. It's just their author illustrator. You know, you, you, when you open up the envelope and it doesn't have your name on it and it's a form letter, you know that this is a rejection. You don't even bother reading it. Why did I say this? Here, let's see if there's some, some of them are, um, yeah, here's another one. Dear writer, they always apologize somewhere in here. It's like, we're sorry. Yeah, see this one. We are sorry to write you that we do not feel your project is suitable for our list. That was a rejection. Let me get, pull up. Why do I have all these? Lordy. <laughs> Here's another one from Viking Children's Books. Thanks, Viking. I ended up publishing with you. Anyways, dear writer, 
thank you for your submission to Viking Children's Books. We have now had a chance to consider your material, and we regret to say that it is not right for us. Rejection. Then, after a bunch of those, some didn't even say, dear writer, they didn't even care about formalities, it was just like, plunge right into the rejection part. There's always a sorry in there, or re regret. Anyways, then I got this one. Hover over the name. Andrew, oh geez, Andrew, and her phone number. <laughs> I hope I didn't put that in there. Um, it says, Dear Megan, this was on, this was 2000. Jeez, I'm getting old. Dear Megan, I love the idea and illustrations for George Upside Down, but the story is slight. It needs drama, excitement, tension. Give me a call when you're in New York City. I'd love to see your portfolio. All the best, editor. Wow. When you get a handwritten thing like this, um... That's awesome. I was so freaking excited, even though it was her rejection. I was still excited. But anyways, I had decided to move to New York because my roommate, no, she wasn't my roommate. She became my, anyways, um, someone I knew, a friend of mine was moving. Some of my other friends were moving. I'm like, don't leave me behind. I shoved the last of my belongings into my car, said my goodbyes to Providence, and to my storage locker. I drove to where I grew up, Situate, Rhode Island, and said goodbye to the reservoir, and to the woods I used to play in, and to my parents. Bye, honey. Call us when you get there. Bye, Mom. Bye, kiddo. As I hit the highway and cranked up the volume, I thought about my life. Then it hit me. I never lived anywhere but Rhode Island. My job was there. My family was there. I was there. Was. I drove through downtown Brooklyn. I was shocked. Garbage. Spray paint. Noise! But the view was amazing. I had written, you know, if you, for correspondence, I put my parents' address. I'm moving to New York, I wrote. So then, so she's like, come meet with me. You would think when I got to New York, what would be the first thing you would do? Would you call this person up? She put her phone number on the bottom. No, I did not. I was too chicken. Instead, I got a job at Pearl Paint and I stuck price tags on paintbrushes all day, every day for about $7 an hour. I couldn't stand it. Could not. I thought it was so dumb. They had boxes of paintbrushes and they were like, it's a sale. Please put all these fluorescent orange stickers on all the brushes. And I said, um, why don't we do batches at a time? Because you don't know you, you, that you're going to sell all these and the sale is only like a week. No, you do what I say. I'm obviously a little issue with authority here. Anyways, so sure enough, the rest of the time at my employment, I use, had to use a razor blade and cut all of the fluorescent tags off of brushes. That's what I did. At some point I blew up, I wrote, I said, I'm leaving at the, you know, I'm giving you my two weeks notice. And then the manager called me up at the end of the day and she's like, we don't need you for the two weeks. You can go now. And that was the end of my job. And so I had a thousand dollar rent in this very sketchy apartment that didn't have a wood floor or any floor. It was a cement floor with a drain hole at the bottom and there was flies everywhere. So I shared it, the other half was a bakery and I even had to share the heating bill the, with the bakery, which I was not informed about ahead of time. This is totally illegal, by the way, totally. So yeah, it was an old storefront. It was very strange. I won't get into that. Anyways, I was desperate. My parents lent me the money. Thank you, parents. Um, in that way, I was very fortunate. Uh, so then I got a job at a bookstore. Well, somewhere around there, I, when I was desperate, I started dropping off my portfolio and my story ideas at publishers because I don't think they, they do this anymore. I, I'm not positive, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, 
Um, so you drop it off at the beginning of the day, like my portfolio, and I have some. This is, gonna break. this is one I made. I thought I would get attention. They're all black portfolios that usually people drop off. And instead I'm like, I'm gonna do creative things and see if you know they'll pull mine out of the pile because it's a little more interesting. So I actually sewed this bubble wrap and I even painted this uh, button orange and you can undo it there. Here we go. Here's the portfolio. I made this out. I actually handmade this as you can see. This is what my portfolio looked like. Yep, that, um, here's another portfolio I had, also handmade, and this is on board. This is my editorial style, you can see. All my editorial people had teeth, and the um, non-editorial people didn't have teeth. Oh wait, I lied, this guy has teeth, but usually they do not have teeth. I don't know where I came up with that from. Oh, and there's, here's one. I remember um, my neighbor was, in As the World Turns, I, I kid you not. As the World Turns. I believe I should be doing a job in voice of yours from now on. Billy and Jennifer hooking up? Keep it down, all right? There's people sleeping upstairs. Give me. Anyway, in and this scene, my neighbor is on the left and he gets killed off the show. Yeah. Sadly. Oh. Yeah. Uh. I overheard Jen talking to Abigail, and then I asked Jen about it. And I had my artwork tacked on the wall. This is when I was working at Pearl Paint as a, you know, that job. And he's like, you know, and he would, his these limos would drive up and he'd get in them and he'd have like big scripts dropped off. And he saw one of my art and he's like, you know, I think you're gonna, you're gonna be something. And I didn't believe him, but I guess he saw something I did not in my own self. Um, Here's another one. This one was AstroTurf. These are all falling apart, as you can see, but yeah, this is, uh, this is one of my portfolios of like, and it did get attention. They wrote notes. Let me see if I can find any. Uh, what's this one? <laughs> Dear Megan, uh, thanks again. This is in uh, 2003. Thanks again for sending your portfolio so quickly. I think I didn't want to let it go. I didn't, I didn't want to let go of the indoor slash outdoor carpeting subconsciously. So I kept it longer than usual. I like your bold line and sense of humor. Hope to work with you sometime in the future. Please keep us updated. I guess I forgot to keep them updated. That was Candlewick 2003. But yeah, see, gotta be creative. What else? I, I think someone else told me like they, they were popping the bubble wrap on my, on my thing. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I dropped it off at Scholastic and I had gotten a note. I, I, I got home at the end of the, I didn't, I got home and I hadn't even yet got, gone back to pick my portfolio up and someone called me on the phone. It was from the art director at Scholastic and I was like, holy, you know, bleep. Um, I couldn't believe it. She's like, come in meet with me. And then when I picked up my portfolio, she left me this note in there. See, handwriting. If it's handwritten, you, you're, you're, you're in the door, your, your foot's in the door. Um, so it was a great meeting, it was really cool. Um, and that helped me get over a little bit of my anxiety. So um, remember this handwritten thing. I finally thought about it more. The first time I called, there was a voice message. I had drank some wine, I was so nervous, like a glass of wine. So it's probably a good thing she didn't answer the phone. Um, she called again later when I got the courage and she's like, I don't remember you. And my heart sank like, oh, she goes, but I must have meant it so you can come in and meet with me. And that was my first editor. And we did my first book together, George Upside Down. That's way out of print at this point. Um, so from, from that, people had seen my art in stores and um, a couple edit other editors contacted me once they saw my artwork after my book was published. So that it's like once you get published, you can get the ball rolling a little bit and, you know, get some notice there, um, especially, oh, I had an advantage. So I worked at Union Square Barnes and Noble and because I worked there, they put my book on display. So I'm sure that helped me get a little bit of attention. That was another, that I have plenty of stories about that job. I'm not gonna talk about it. Anyways, uh, so that's pretty much how I got my start. At some point, um, I remember my first book, you would scan the back of the barcodes like this right here. 
uh, at the store and if it beeped it would make this like nar, 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 noise and that was a bad that was a bad sign it means the book was going back like it's going out of print store's not going to keep it so um yeah so my first book it beeped I scanned it sad moment <laughs> um so I thought oh man and then the second book I had it was the same thing and I was embarrassed and I'd hide and I didn't want my book on display anymore and uh um, yeah, it's, it's being a, a, an author is an emotional roller coaster for sure. And I remember I like, I do these book events and I, you know, you end up begging all of your friends and family, please go. I don't want to look like nobody likes my book. And so basically everyone there is your friends and family that you beg to come. So at some point I just, the heck with those things. I'm not going to keep begging my friends and family to show up to things. Um, <clears throat> so at some point, like I saw the nonfiction section, um, it was in, it was very small at the time. I mean, now nonfiction common core, it's all the rage. But when I first got my idea, there were not many, you know, creative books, creative nonfiction. So the first one I did was Aliens Are Coming. Um, so I was really nervous about that. I'm like, it's my first nonfiction book. I didn't know how it would go. Uh, and the New York Times reviewed it. Like when the New York, New York Times reviewed something, like I always thought at the bookstore, like, oh, you're golden if the New York Times reviews it. You are golden. However, the New York Times criticized it and said that my art wasn't scary enough. I did that on purpose. One of the big things I was nervous about was I didn't want to scare the crap out of kids. <clears throat> so, you know, I tried to make them look, the aliens look like a little cutesy. But uh, anyways, no, um, they criticized it. And I remember, I, I wonder if I still have this email. I'll go look, stick it in the video. Um, I remember I said to my editor, I never wanted to do another book again. I quit. I kid you not. I think she had to pull me off the ledge. But so, well, like I said, emotional roller coaster here. It's the same with money. It's like, a, oh, I've got money. Oh, I have no money. Oh, I have money. No money. Like I get paid sometimes once a year, twice a year. So don't think you're going to be J.K. Rowling right off the bat or ever. So, uh, so that's my story about how I got published. I hope you enjoyed it. You can put com questions, comments below. Please be nice. All right. Thank you for listening. Have a good day.